there. He fought Tyson Fury. Fury was very good early, ninth round. Uh, Deontay knocked him out. People want a rematch. Uh, and now Deontay Wilder, one of the top two heavyweights currently in the class, fights this Friday. Let's bring him on the show. It's his second time on the show. The bronze bomber who has a record of 41-0 and in one draw. That draw to Tyson Fury. Uh, I was just watching. Lord, you guys... The ninth round was your best round. Um, it's just amazing. You were you guys from round one were swinging from the heels. Yes. You you there was nothing about that. You know it's funny. I've I've you have a ninety five percent knockout rate, which is in the class of uh, Mike Tyson, Rocky Marciano. You're not overly subtle. You want to end fights quickly. So, I mean, this weekend, by the way, you're fighting a guy again that you fought before, Ortiz. He didn't look to be in good enough shape for you are you concerned a little bit that you know he said you were hitting with uh, some of your stuff was borderline illegal he's kind of trying to Hmm. taunt you do you feel he's trying to get into your head and taunt you before the fight um you know most most time fighters try to get in your head you know before a fight for me you know everyone has their percentages in boxing for as mental what's mental and what's physical for me Boxing is 90, 96% physical and 4% mental for me. So, I mean, I mean 90, 90, 96% mental and 4% physical for me because if you can get in a person's head before fighting them, then the battle is already won, you know. And, you know, sometimes they say certain things to try to upset you, make you get you off a game or whatever. That's, you know, proper protocol. But my mind is already made up come Saturday night what I'm going to do. You know, I love this sport because the name of this game is pain. And I do that very well when I'm applying pressure to my opponent. 95% knockout rate. Do you worry about when you've never lost a fight, you've had only one draw, uh, after the fight with Fury, uh, because you're the two best heavyweights in the world, uh, a lot of people said Fury uh, outpointed you early. The ninth was clearly your best round. When that fight was over for you, and you were as honest as you could be. You were out. Of, you were out of the ring. You went home. Did you feel you won the fight? What What did you feel two days later about that fight? Two days later, I felt one hundred percent that I won that fight. You know for sure. You know, it's a lot for the first four rounds. I definitely won the first four rounds. You know what I mean. And then with the two knockdowns as well included, especially with the especially with the last knockdown when the when uh, Jack Reese was. Terribly counted, so slow, you know. That you know, you took it away. He said he went out for the spirit of boxing and not the rules. Why, what you mean going out for the spirit? Your job is to count. Do it. That's an easy job to do. To count the ten, you know. And you know, I felt like I was, I was, uh, that was taken away from me. But you know, I don't, I don't make no excuses. I don't hold grudges. You know what I mean? It's a blessing in disguise because now. We have the rematch coming up. And, you know, you have some people saying he won. You have some people saying I won. So it was a very controversial fight. And, you know, controversy sells. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be going in the rematch with him again to prove to everyone that what I did the first time, I shall do it the second time. By the way, the guy Ortiz you're fighting this weekend is 31-1. and one. Aren't you concerned you're overlooking him? I mean, nah, t- You know, I, I never overlook no one. I never look past anyone. But I do look through you. I window shop a little bit. <laughs> you window shop. <laughs> I window shop. It's called window shopping because you know if I can see my next, it's just like Fury's next. So if I, it just, it's almost like if he's sitting back as a silhouette behind you or something like that, or you know, and I'm looking through you. It's like I know where I need to go, but I know what I have to do. I have to get through you to go where I need to, you know, to to get to where I need to go. So it's it's more like motivation for me, you know, seeing back, you know, how you ain't you ain't got no money, you just window shopping, you see what you like and you know like if I work hard, I'll get it. Are you are you largely overwhelmingly done with training for this weekend's fight? Are you done? Um, we got a couple of shakeouts. What's that, that we, mean? You know, meaning that I I keep my blood flowing, you know, I, I don't want to this whole week to just stay still. Right. So usually we have like media workouts and then after that like before the fight, I do like a shakeout, like hit the mitts 
go over get certain instructions. Yeah, get a sweat, get your blood flowing, you know, get the muscles, you know, loose. So you just, you don't want to sit all the way to the fight. You know, some guys train all the way up into their fight, but as a heavyweight, I don't do that. I need my body to be able to be replenished with fluid and water, the proper um, food and water and stuff. Because we go so hard as heavyweights, you know, you bring all those big guys in. I call them the Mighty Three. I bought the Mighty Three in, and these guys huge, you know, to get me prepared and stuff. So all that is just beating and beating on your body. That's why when a fighter get into the ring, he's, no fighter's never 100% getting into the ring. We can say we feel great. We can say we feel like we're in the best shape of our lives. And it's a feeling. You may feel that way, but... You're never 100% getting in the ring. By the way, MGM Saturday, Fox Pay-Per-View. Uh, this will be, I think, your 10th defense of your championship. Yes. Um, do you fight differently seeking a championship and now defending it? Are you more cautious at times because you are the favorite? You are the Patriots. You're Alabama football. You're defending your title. Do you ever find that sometimes that makes you a little less aggressive or less willing to throw a, a big punch or be aggressive in a round. You're, you're now defending stuff. Yeah. No, me, you know, like I said, I couldn't have brain the pain. You know, I don't, I don't hold nothing in the back. What I tell you that I'm going to do to you, I make sure I keep my word. I'm like one of those people that I definitely walk like I talk it. And I think that's what, you know, over time people didn't understand. Some people would think it was for like act or promotion, but over time, they realize that I am who I am. Like, when I transform into the bronze bomber, it's, it's no, it's no, <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't finna hold, hold back. It's no mercy. It's no pity, you know, that I'm holding back. I want to apply as much pain as possible. So I covered Mike Tyson for years, and about 72 hours before a fight, Mike shut down. He wouldn't talk. He mm. got very grumpy. Yeah. People didn't want to be around him. So you, you're, you're, this is Monday. You're still in a good mood. When do you, because I've heard this from fighters, the personality. You think I'm in a good mood? You seem very jovial. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Will, is there a moment that it changes for you? The, the temperature in the room, you change. You get a little quieter, more into yourself in the fight. Most definitely. You know, right now is the transformation that's happening. You know what I mean? A lot of things, you know, is not funny to me at this point in time. I'm very serious, you know. Although I may smile, but inside it's like I'm serious, you know. And it's just, at closest, the closer the fight comes, the more you feel that that, that, that Intensity. Urge. Like, yeah, because you got to think about it. You've been training for, I've been training for this one man for a month. I've been in the bed visualizing his face for a month. The speed bath for a month. My trainers... They're getting hurt, <laughs> holding mitts for me. I, one of my trainers was had the, had, the, had the body bag on. I'm hitting him in the body, and I separated his his cartilage from his, his the bone on his ribs. You know what I mean? Thinking about this man. So if you continue to think about something, something, they say the law of attraction, and we draw what we think, right? So come Saturday night, November the 23rd, I will draw what I've been thinking about and what I've performed on the bags, the mitts, or anything else, thinking about this man, I shall do in the ring. One hour before the fight, you're getting taped up. What do you like? I'm, I'm totally focused. I'm visualizing how I want to walk out, what I want to do when I get in the ring. Are you nervous at all? Never. Not a little? Never. Not an int? Not nothing? Look, I have more knockouts than some of these guys have fight wins, you know? I'm a knockout artist. How do you know when you hit a guy, there's a difference. You know, there are times that you punch. It looks very George Foreman to me. Mm. It's heavy. Your hands are heavy. Um, you're, you're, the guy you, that you're going to fight Saturday, Luis King Kong Ortiz, can take a punch. Yeah. No question. He's yes, got a sir. chin. How do you know if you've hurt him? Does it, because you land punches. Mm. How do you know if you've heard him? Is it the eyes? Do you, does, do you sense body? How do you know when, all right, because a lot of times you can land a punch. You guys are all 220, 230. You're Correct. big men. How do you know when you hurt a guy? Well, it's all about body language, experience and body language. You know what I mean? When you in there and you've done something, or you've seen an act so many times, you already automatically understand it and it can identify it and and from identify you apply pressure to it you know sometimes you can over sometimes you could you could you know think it's something happened but it may not really be you know you see many guys that 
thought they hurt a fighter. Then they, they go move in, in, you know what I'm saying? And they get popped. Yeah, get popped or they waste too much energy. And then now you're tired and this guy coming back, you know, the sport of boxing is so magical. It's like we both can be tired in the ring. But if you feel like I'm more tired than you, is this somehow like you suck my energy into you and you started to get, you know, more energized and come on. Like it's just, it's all about how heroic your heart is, how brave you are, you know. And it's it's amazing sport, you know, how things work oh, out. I love but, fights. Ah, oh, man, it's, it's, you have to think about so much. You have to really just... So when you got in the ring with Tyson Fury, it was very aggressive initially. Mm -hmm. He was doing a lot of taunting with you. Mm -hmm. He was trying to get into your head. And he does that for to win on the judges. See, so when, he's when trying fighter, to manipulate the judges. Correct. Manipul See, when you do those tactics when you're trying to win the round, manipulation and stuff. See, I, I didn't really play into that. I was very serious going back and forth. My mind was somewhere else, you know, but I understood what he was doing, the taunting, and, you know, I could have done it back, and we would have seen who won the taunting war or whatever, but that was he, that was he was trying to do. Do when you he respect did him? That. Most definitely. I respect all fighters. You know what I mean? We risk our lives for others' entertainment. So with that being said, you must respect. Do you, can you hear the crowd when you're in the ring? At times. Because this weekend, they'll be rooting for you. Yeah, at times. At times, but most of the time, I be, like, my mind goes into a tunnel vision. Like, no matter how many people is in the arena or in the room, like, when I'm focused, I can just tunnel vision. I can just really just focus I've, on you and me jo and block everything. Uh, uh, Joey, I've always been fascinated by this. I love fights. So my mm. first job out of college, I got a job in Vegas. Mm. Mike Tyson was emerging. Uh, I was always, f and Sugar Ray Leonard, Hearn. So I, I never, I'd watch boxing as a kid, Ali Foreman. Then I get my first broadcasting job is Vegas. Yeah. I mean, most guys' first broadcasting job is in Midland, Texas. I get Vegas, Sugar Ray Leonard, Hagler, Hearns, Mike Tyson. So it was this incredible thing. I'm this yeah. small-town kid. <laughs> I walk in. You're this small-town Alabama kid. Yeah. And Saturday night, you're in a ring. It's a heavyweight championship fight, and yet you have no nerves. None. Was there ever nerves when you fought? None. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been doing it for years. I've been... It was time where it, it was time when I walked out the house, you know, I, you know... I'm you're prepared. a kid. Oh, by the time I got back to the house, I was into some fights. You in know in Alabama? Oh, most definitely. You know, it was just, it, it was during that time. I think, you know, when you come up in certain areas and it's like, it's lack of activity, you know what I'm you saying? You make your own. You make your own. And sometimes, like, the wrong things become the fun things because you don't have no other things to do. Have you so ever you gone back? Have you ever gone back to your small Alabama home in Tuscaloosa and met any of the guys you used to fight as a kid? Um, I haven't seen them personally. Um, They're aware of your. Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. <laughs> and, a, a lot of them, and a lot of them always say, "Like, man, you finally put that fight to some good use." Because I was a kid, like you were a fighter, I, but I was like so closed in. Like I was, I was to myself. I only spoke when spoken to. You know, what I mean, I wasn't like no violent person to go around and look for that. You right. know, what I mean, I was just this kid. You know, didn't have much. Just stayed to myself, and people would would pick with me because I didn't have the finer things, or I wasn't like sociable like I am now. Now I just talk way too much. You know what I mean? And no, we, we kind of like that. That's why we bring you on the show. We like talkers on the show. We like verbal people. So you fight Saturday at the MGM. Are all rings the same? Is the MGM the same as Madison Square Garden? Is it? it are there rings? Are there atmospheres? You know, the desert's dry. You mm. can go out east or Miami and it's humid. Do you yeah. like Vegas? I lo yeah, I definitely love Vegas. I mean, I won my title there, so it's going to be... Um, MGM's a great venue. I've seen about a have, dozen fights there. Yeah, and, you know, they always have a great crowd yeah. as well. People all, you know, around the world come there, you know. And, you know, somehow, you know, when they when they come to Vegas, they think there's no laws when people out of the It's a little come. bit, it's a rebellious it, place. <laughs> it is. Do you, do you put on a show a little bit in Vegas? Do you feel like Deontay is the champ? You put on a little show. You're entertainment too, not just a boxer. Yeah. You're in Vegas. Yeah. You putting I, on a little show Saturday? I mean... What you, what comes of me is 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 what comes of me. Like I don't fake nothing. Like my personality is who I am. I don't just because I'm in Vegas or I'm in New York or I'm in you know California. I'm, I don't put on no type of no persona of being someone fake or whatever we consider that as being a fake. You know what I'm that's saying? inauthentic. You're you know not what I'm saying? I'm I'm very real about what I say, what I do. Right. I'm very passionate about what I say and what I do. So. What people get of me is 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 really me, you know what I mean? And I can be silly at times. I can, 
you know, go into my motivating, motivating type of person, you know, because I'm a type of person. I love to see people make it. I love to see people do well. Even if they do better than me, I'm happy because somebody winning, you know, in life because I understand the struggles of life. So you get so many different sides of me. I'm so many different. But I don't, sense, I don't sense you're fighting angry. Something no, like Mike Tyson no. often fought angry. Yeah. You're not an angry fighter. <laughs> not at all. You know, if I get angry, then I cloud my mind. I can't think properly. It won't be a clear vision of what I'm trying to accomplish in the ring, you know. But when I'm just loose, my mind is loose, my mind is open. I can think about combinations. I can see things happening before they happen. And then it allows me to take that approach, you know. And that's how my that's sure. how my mind works. You know, I, I have to have a clear mind. Now, by know? the way, you sound like a quarterback. That's the same thing. You can't <laughs> yeah. if you play, some guys play angry, and I, you know, I, yeah. I'm not a big fan. I don't believe in. I don't host angry. Yes. You know. I've had bad shows, but I don't host angry. Yeah. Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder. It's going to be Saturday, MGM pay-per-view, November 23rd. He is once again defending his title, Luis King Kong Ortiz, who you beat. It was a 10-rounder, and he was not in the... To me, he better work on his cardio from the first fight. Then after that's the Tyson Fury fight. You're mm. always welcome on our show. Deontay, so always welcome on our show. Thank you so much. A gracious much. champion. I love, love talking to you. And I'll be like talkative champions as yes, well. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, joy with the news. No, 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 no. Turn